I was a park ranger for many years at a local park in my town. It was a decent sized, with plenty to offer. It had two different playground areas for the smaller kids, and there was a decent sized walking and biking path that went back into the trees and circled around the entire park, and it also had a back entrance that split off to follow along the road. In the back, in the trees, there was also a secluded gazebo area that people had parties at, too. Then, there was a small water park and skate park on the other side of the path. There always seemed to be something going on there, year-round, which I didn't mind. I loved being outside, and I loved my job, so I loved just patrolling the area or helping out when someone called us for something. However, it wasn't always a happy job. I also got sent to check on or clean up some bad situations. Most of the time, it was people being disruptive, like drinking and being loud or inconsiderate to others. People trashing an area, like at the gazebo in the back, and then leaving their mess, breaking up fights, things like that. But there were a few situations that stuck with me, that I never really got answers for. This was one of the weirdest ones for me. So back by the gazebo was an open grassy area that we tended to have school or scouts camping in. There was a place where you could barbecue, but they usually got permits to do a campfire. I assume to learn how to start fires and stuff like that. When we had groups like this, we typically had one ranger staying overnight in the area to make sure that everyone was safe, and also not doing things they weren't supposed to. I'd done this a few times, and I loved it, because I got to hang out in the park all night, sleep under the stars, and typically got free food. So I was going to be staying one night since a group of Girl Scouts, or something of that sort, was going to be there. I, of course, drove there, but then all I had with me for the night was my backpack that had some of the things I would take with me when I was camping. My ID stuff to prove I was a park ranger, and a fold-up cot that I had. I liked to literally sleep under the stars. No tent, no canopy, just me and a cot, and it was perfect. So, I did my rounds and answered questions that any of the adults had, helped lead them to the restrooms, and then they all got ready for bed and headed to their tents. I did another round just to make sure that everyone else was gone and that nothing was wrong, and then I went and laid on my cot. It usually takes a while for me to fall asleep though, so I laid there for a while, reading, before I finally started to get drowsy. As I went to put my book back into my bag and turn off my headlamp, I heard crunching like someone was walking. I immediately looked around to see if anyone was getting out of their tent, and I didn't see anyone. I turned my lamp back on and started to look over at the tents again, but again I didn't see anyone getting out or any movements coming from them. So I started looking around the trees to see if there was someone around that shouldn't be or possibly even wildlife. We did have the occasional deers or raccoons that may go through, so I was thinking that probably is what it was. But then, my eyes met with something standing in the trees. There's a pretty thick area of trees that separates the front of the park from the back, so it would be weird for anyone to be walking through them. Not to mention, when I did my walk around, there was no sign of anyone around, and not even any extra cars in the parking lot. There was no reason for people to be here as we were long closed, so I just sat and watched for a moment to see what they would do. They had to know that I was staring at them, with my light facing right at them, but still they didn't budge. As I watched this guy though, my eyes started to focus more in the dark, and I realized a couple of things. One, this guy was huge. I was comparing him to the trees, and his height was daunting. 
he had to be seven or eight feet tall, but maybe it was just because I was tired. But other than just looking freakishly tall, I thought he was wearing a big fur coat. He just looked very furry. The problem I had with this, though, is that it was around August, I believe, so it was way too hot to be wearing a fur coat. I didn't want to alarm any of the kids, so I stood up and thought I would walk over there to see if they were okay, and then ask them to leave if so. As I stood up, the guy backed up slowly and started walking away. That's when I noticed that it wasn't a coat. This guy, or thing, was covered in fur. His legs, arms, everywhere. I started getting closer to the trees when this thing just took off in the opposite direction, but on all fours. He was standing and walking on two legs, but then when he ran off on all fours, it seemed so fluid, like an animal, not a human. I'm not going to lie, though. I was not brave enough to follow this thing, but was also not wanting to wake up the campers. I didn't want to scare the kids and look like the psycho, so I walked along the outside of the trees, scared this thing was going to jump out at me, but I didn't see it again. I called out to someone that was on call, and I asked if they knew of anything going on or anyone that was supposed to be here, and he said no. I told them that I saw something in the trees, and he immediately just dismissed it as a deer or something. So, I tried to snap out of it and headed back to my cot and laid there. Unfortunately, at that point, though, every little sound would catch my attention. When the wind blew and moved a branch, I would look over at it. I would look around if I heard a car driving by. Anytime the girls shifted in the tents, I would jump up. So... Needless to say, I didn't sleep very well that night. Thankfully, the girls were young enough that they woke up pretty early, so I wasn't alone anymore. Some of the adults noticed that I looked off and asked if I was okay, and I just said that I didn't sleep well, and I didn't mention anything else about it. I did tell my friend that worked there too about what had happened and what I saw, and of course, he was adamant that I had seen Bigfoot. I live in a state that's known for its sightings, and that's all I'll say about my location, but I never believed in that stuff before. Now, I'm not quite sure. I don't know how else I could explain what I saw, though. Either way, I never saw it again while I worked there, thankfully. But you can bet that I was better prepared for future overnight stays.